Hi everybody, uh, I'm Frank Iuro, and this is the Pure Volume Q&A. Question number one is from Deb Poe. Uh, are you still considering putting out a poetry and or photography volume? Yes, I am. I would like to do that very, very much. Um, but right now I'm super busy with uh, the things that are coming out right now and going on tour. So uh, it had to unfortunately take a little bit of a back seat, but uh, I very, very much want to do that. And if you, if you, uh, if you know Penguin uh, Publishing House, you let them know that I'm into it. Rosa Duarte. I was wondering if the MCR members still stay in contact. Uh, have you guys ever talked since the breakup? Yes, quite a bit. Uh, we talk a lot. There's still uh, bad, bad business that we, we talk about. And then also, uh, Ray and I uh, like to discuss uh, barbecue techniques. And he is a, uh, a type of, he's like a, a high sauce wizard. So he helps me with, uh, with that kind of stuff. Emil Hopper, what's happening with death spells? Um, I don't know. The, the record is, Still 95% done, and uh, I think though because uh, the things that I'm doing, and things that James are, is doing, uh, it just we haven't had a chance to to lock it in and, and just release it. We really should just release it. Um, but there's something about like we want to do it correctly, and we just don't have the time to do it the way we want to do it yet. So um, what's happening with it is it's it's uh, it's dormant right now, but it's not dead. I'm not sure what they say. Emery Bauman, uh, if there was a moment in your life that you could relive, what would it be? I don't know. I don't know if I would. Uh, I kind of feel like uh, it's best just being how it was. You know what I mean? Uh, the memories sometimes too are even better than, than the actual experiences. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, I don't know. That's a, that's a hard one. Because you don't want to go back and change anything and, and, and then mess up the future. Lauren Rose. How different is writing and recording as a solo artist rather than being in a band? Um, it's a lot different. Uh, you know, you, I've always been in bands. I've always you know, recorded in band settings and stuff like that. And uh, when, when doing this project, it was, it was fun because whatever thing comes to your head, whatever crazy idea you have, you can, you can do it and execute it. If you, you, know, you can reach the buttons and stuff, you can do it. But no one is there to, to, you know, to rein you in. And, uh, and tell you if it's any good or any bad. Sandra McCrindle, uh, is there any band or artist you'd love to collaborate with in the near future? Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of artists uh, that I, I, I respect and love and would love to play with. Um, I mean, the pipe dream, I guess, would be Tom Waits or something like that. It's ridiculous, but I mean, he would never have me. <laughs> Allie Carpenter, uh, what musical or non-musical influences helped in the creation of Stomach Aches? Well, I guess uh, nausea is an is a influence uh, in, in, uh, on the record. Also, um, relationships. And uh, not a lot of musical uh, influences, I don't think, kind of like reared their head in there. Maybe some stuff that like, I grew up on listening to. Uh, I, I really wanted the record to start um, in this like, two-chord pop-punk song because I felt like that's where I started. Uh, as, as a, an artist in bands and stuff like that was was these like you know one two three four ban uh, bangers, and uh, that was that was important to me. That was a you know it was a, it's a bad girl and it's like three chords and that's it. So um, that there's an influence there. But uh, as far as other musical influences, I, I think it was just kind of more life experience that that made its way into to stomach aches. All right, Cody Zitek, what's your favorite story behind one of the songs off Stomach Aches? The one song that uh, that actually is influenced by experiences that I had in, in, a pa in past bands is, is a song called Blood Infections. And that song uh, is about a group of people uh, seemingly innocent and naive about uh, the world being kind of uh, uh, taken under uh, maybe a, a, a darker wing kind of thing. And, uh, and you know, the, it's, it's, it's veiled in, in, a, in a story of, uh, of of like a, this vampire-esque uh, imagery, so I think that uh, is a that was a crazy time for for me and, and for my friends when we were uh, first coming up and and being you know like introduced to uh, the industry as opposed to to the, just the music and uh, you, know, you see a lot of crazy stuff. You start to see behind this curtain, and sometimes it's not the, the most glamorous, beautiful thing. <laughs>